Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have a very special guest. We have Merked on the podcast. How are you doing Yo. today? Doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, cool. It's, it's uh, I went outside like 20 minutes ago and it's like nine below out or something, or nine degrees or something like that. But uh, other than that, being inside is, it's, it's a good day to be inside. Um, I do want to, I do want to know how, how did this coaching thing come about? You're, you're a big coacher on, on YouTube. And, yeah. yeah. Oh shit, man. <laughs> well, my cousin wanted to get coached one day on stream and I did it. And then it just turned into, you know, something that I do every day for money and for content. So is yeah. that, is that most of your content is just coaching? Yep. So I want to try to change it up too, because I don't want to, you know, over coach, you know, how you do something so much, it becomes repetitive. So I don't want to do it too much, but yeah. I do think that's a, it's a great point to, to other creators out there. Uh, when it comes to like maybe digging yourself a hole and not being able to get out of it kind of yeah because uh, like as i do more of these podcasts i'm pretty much known as the valorant voice actor guy and so if i don't do something like that sometimes it doesn't do as well or something so mm -hmm. that's another point like you got to be able to pivot in directions that you are happy with your content and that you can also sustain an audience as well yeah 100 percent. is that something that you think about though is like you don't want to just be in that hole of that or do you really enjoy it or what's what's the ideas behind that um i mean like yeah i, I enjoy it i was just like again i felt like i've been i've been doing it too much so yeah. as you do it too much you will enjoy it less and less but I do enjoy it. I'd rather not be working at McDonald's, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I understand that I, 100%. Do you, how do you, do people just reach out to you directly when it comes to coaching or do you go through like Fiverr or something? Well, I have a website uh, in my, um, my link tree and then I have people sign up from there or some people DM me if they have, you know, something they want specifically and then I'll probably respond to that. Okay. I, I like that. I like that. Uh, so do you, do you ever do, do you just play on stream or anything? Yeah, I do some ranked and I, you know, I host tournaments and stuff and occasionally I'll post those on YouTube as well. Um, and then, you know, I'll stream ranked and occasionally get TikTok clips as well on there. And that's what I post on TikTok mostly. But when do you, uh, when did you start TikTok? I'd say for Valorant, um, a year ago, but I had a Fortnite phase as well. I started that like two years ago, but yeah, I took Valorant TikTok pretty serious. I grew pretty quick, I'd say. Um, and yeah. What do you, what do you think about like when you first started, what was, how, how quickly did you get that first viral video? This is, this is my favorite question because I like to know what, how quick people got that. My first video, I got 100K views. <laughs> Your um, first one? Yeah, my first video had 100K oh, you suck. views. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, and I took it as an advantage. You know, once you see that 100K view video, you're going to be like, all right, the next video, it's going to be put in people's algorithm, you know, and you have to take advantage of it. It's crazy to me because... I was, I created videos. I posted my first TikTok, I think either like 20, like early 2019 or like late, early 2020, one of those. And I didn't, I didn't get a video with over 10,000 views <laughs> until like June of last year. And then that was my first 100,000 view video. And then after that was like, I posted consistently too. <laughs> But I, I was just, I just was applying pressure because I knew I was going to break through sometime, but I also yeah. wasn't making like super good videos. Did, did the mm -hmm. Fortnite, what was your Fortnite content on TikTok? Was it like, 
were you were, were there hooks at the beginning to hook people in or was it just gameplay it was um more of just teaching people tips okay and yeah there's like a hook in the beginning like um this is how you do this blah 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 and you know after learning that 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 wasn't the move and it, it showed because the views were not as big like i had to switch mm -hmm. is that how how like how much do you think about the hook at the beginning of a tiktok is that a Every time. is it a long process of thinking like this sounds better yes yes because you know the first three seconds are literally the biggest yeah the, the biggest things that you should be focusing on like holy yeah i don't think people realize how important that is because a lot of people who post valorant tiktoks i see this all the time it's very hard to just get a game just straight no cam no nothing like it's hard to get views on that type of video you mm -hmm desperately need at least a hook but it, i think it's really important to have a face cam it's a lot mm -hmm. it's it's easier to to see and process that um but people just post gameplay and they're like that was a sick clip why didn't it go viral it's because a lot of people are like watching the first two seconds of you slow walking and then just getting off of it so i think people need to you know, work on that. I think the hook game is the most important thing in the world. Hundred percent. When it comes to TikToks. Hundred percent. Uh, how how long is that process of making a TikTok for you? Um, it used to be, you know, a couple hours, but now it's um, I'd say a whole day it'd take me to make a TikTok or two, because I've been posting. I I. <laughs> I've been posting so much, bro. Like I've been posting like TikToks straight, like one TikTok every day for uh, probably like three, four months or so. And it just gets repetitive. Mm -hmm. And just having to constantly do that is just, it's heavy on you. But, you know, especially if it's the same game. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I thought breaks are also really good for you. Yeah, because don't you stream every other day? Yeah, I do. I think that's that's like it's really nice because you don't have to like people to set that schedule and that expectation in people's mind that you're going to be on every other day streaming it's not like it's not so strenuous on I'm sure it's still like a lot to to be there but it's not as every day you know yeah is that something that did have you always had that or is that something that you had to put into place because of you know like a, a different schedule um i don't know i feel like i've always had that because i have to one i have to get radiant and valorant which is also a stress that happens you know if i don't get it i feel bad yeah you know at the game and stuff and i also have to post content and then i also have to stream and i have to come up with ideas and it just it's pretty overwhelming but you, you get used to it so it, do you have anyone else who helps you like do you offload any of your work whether it's you know thumbnails editing anything do you offload any of that yep so i have an editor now which is very really good for youtube only but TikTok and Twitch, I do myself. Mm -hmm. It's really hard uh, to trust someone with that stuff, especially when you have a specific style and specific uh, like aesthetic that you want to, you know, hit. It's hard to just trust anyone just because they know how to use the software. Doesn't mean that they're gonna, you know, make it to your liking. So that's that's something that a lot of people don't realize. I don't know. Is that is that something that you had to work through to, to get to where you liked your edit? Yeah, <laughs> it took me I think probably three years to find a good editor. To mm -hmm. be honest, um, and you know we were on a Fortnite team, Fortnite team together, and uh, 
yeah, we're just really, as time goes on, you'll get to understand each other and yeah, you'll know what each other like and stuff. So, how long have you have you been like actually creating content? Three years, I'd say. Three okay. years, yeah. So when I first started, um, I just streamed right to like ten viewers. Didn't make any content, you know. Just let Twitch do everything, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I noticed that TikTok, Twitch, or TikTok, YouTube are pretty huge for bringing people to your stream. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's really important to have the external platforms to 100%. to bring in to other things is i do want to your your youtube is really is really good and i really liked what i was looking at and all the thumbnails were great and uh i love the focus on on youtube because you post quite often on youtube what's uh, what's your schedule for youtube videos <laughs> as Probably they come like, yeah as they come in but yeah. i try to every week or once every week so yeah. yeah but i think it's something that a lot of like these tiktok uh valorant creators and stuff um kind of neglect in a way it's kind of i mean but i get it when you don't have when you're a one-man team and you're streaming and you're doing all this stuff you, youtube's kind of in the back of your mind but it's still oh, there yeah. um mm -hmm. But I do like when I see someone who's doing everything because I know that they're grinding. Yeah. It's it's difficult, but yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. Is or are you gonna say something? Um, I was just gonna say, um, yeah. When I first started, it was like TikTok was just the main focus, and then mm -hmm. as I grew on TikTok, YouTube was the transition. But yeah. yeah. But so did you start content with Fortnite? Yeah. Okay. Were you did the people in your life know that you played video games a lot or shit. I mean, yeah. My my family did know. And I didn't tell them what I was doing though. Like I kind of just surprised them. Yeah. Like I kind of just let the videos get on their recommended and stuff and then, you know, form of surprise, I guess. Because they they doubted, you know, most of my family members would say, yeah, you can't make money off of content creation and playing video games, you know, with, you know, their mindset and whatever. It's kind of hard to teach them that. Yeah. And I mean, I think a lot of people, it'd be weird if you didn't deal with that, to be honest with you. I think that's so normal that everyone's just like, that ain't possible. Nothing like nothing like that. But yeah. I mean... It's, is it, what about like, um, I think there's just like every high school or whatever, were you, were you like the best Fortnite player in your, <laughs> do people know about that? Well, like in high school, I played CSGO. I didn't make content CS, but I played about like 5,000 hours in CSGO. Good Lord. Good Lord. I know, <laughs> man. I used to be like semi-professional, I guess I'd say. I got um, A and ESEA. I don't know if you know what that is, but not really. Yeah, something. It's like uh, something the pros used to play. But, okay. Yeah. So I did not know you were a CS guy. It makes a lot more sense now that, because I I was not. Uh, I was a Call of Duty guy, and I played controller. So Valorant yeah. was my first actual uh, PC game. Have you always been a PC gamer? Um, well, I, f I started on Xbox 360, you know, with the Call of Duty days and stuff, yeah. but then, yeah, it's transitioned, so. Yeah, you kind of had a, a leg up on me there, huh? Yeah, PC. <laughs> 5,000 hours in CS? Yeah. That's a, that's a lot of time. It is a lot of time, but pros have way more, man. I yeah. Have... Did you, were you a big, uh, case guy in CS? You open case up a lot guy. of games? So I, I actually gambled uh, a bit with the gambling sites. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know about those. Yeah, I know. But I remember all that. Yeah. 
my friend actually gave me uh, an eight dollar skin to gamble with, and I I went all the way to three thousand dollars, and I cashed out for a PC, bro. <laughs> oh, you crazy. bought a PC with it? Yeah, bro. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I remember all the the CS:GO Wild and stuff like that. Like, yeah, there was a wasn't there a big controversy around all that stuff though at the end? Yeah, there's a lot of scams going on. Yeah, but I think. Yeah, I definitely opened, I didn't play CS like a whole bunch, but any game that you can buy skins on, buy cases, buy supply drops, anything, I was getting on for 10 minutes and then already buying cases and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, that I was that. kind of my kryptonite was anything that you could, I just didn't want to not have something. Yeah, 100%. Like when they told me the champion's cram, but it wasn't coming back, I was like, oh, why would you Shit. say that? <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, I am curious, what peripherals do you use? What you got for a Perfect. mouse? Um, I got a G Pro Wireless, and I have a Ducky 1-2 Mini for my keyboard. That's basically it. 240 hertz monitor. Simple. Okay. Yeah, simple, but, you know, effective. Effective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love it. Uh, I what was? Do you remember your first uh, keyboard and mouse that you had? Do you remember what it was? Razer, uh, Death Adder. No, that's the mouse. I had the Razer keyboard and mouse though. Yeah, that was I feel like everyone did. Yeah, the blue switches, bro. Those were like loud as hell. I had the the membrane keyboard. That the membrane keyboard. Yeah. The rubber domes or whatever on them oh <clears throat> yeah i what's who's uh who's the like your inspiration for all of this who is that guy or when you're starting or even now i'd say the fellow arab you know the fellow arab yeah so he actually does coaching on fortnite and mm -hmm. i i I saw like all his videos on how he coaches people in Fortnite and I was like, okay, you know what? I can just do this for Valorant since I have so much experience in CSGO, might as well put it into Valorant <laughs> and coach people. So okay. yeah, I took advantage of it. Yeah, I love that. Is so you're you probably have like not probably, you have a lot of knowledge in like Valorant and how how much what actually i'm gonna rephrase this what uh does it ever get like because when i i don't feel like i could give advice confidently do you ever feel like like you're ever gonna like coach someone the wrong way or like hurt their game like i i don't feel like i could be confident in that to give advice in that at the beginning yes but you know as I don't know with so much experience that I have like from CSGO I feel like I know what I'm doing mm -hmm. and if I if I say something wrong then you know I'll definitely learn off of it you know and if they're not improving then I'll be like okay yeah something's wrong with whatever I'm telling them you know maybe I, my teaching style where they don't understand what I'm saying you know it it could affect like me and you know their gameplay so so you're pretty self-aware when it comes to that? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. I just, I think about that all the time, like watching TikTok creators and stuff like that who give certain advice or even have certain takes on things, like hot takes or whatever. And it, it gives me anxiety because I just don't feel like I could, because I know that something's going to, you know, probably piss someone off in a way. And I'm like, I just can't, I couldn't give that, or telling me I'm wrong. Like, if I told someone, you know, this is how you play Astra, and then, like, then the whole comments are like, that's not right. Yeah, I mean, with social media, and I'm sure a lot of creators deal with it, is just learning how to not care about what other people say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a, a reoccurring hate comment? Um, mm, 
Not that I can think of, no. I think when I first started, though, I think I had one. I don't remember what it was, so. I, it might have. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. It might have been, like, something about my looks, but mm. that's it. I don't, I, I, I don't get any, I don't. I don't get anything about like my appearance or anything. I just get a lot of people thinking I'm that what I do is fake. So mm. that's the, literally all it is. It's like he stole these clips, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. It's like that would be so much work to do that. Yeah. I'm that not. I'm not that patient to to do all of that. Mm -hmm. Do you? So do you game off stream? Uh, yes, because. I play actually worse when people are watching me, but it's super weird. I don't know why. It's just like an anxiety thing. But yeah, I play pretty often off stream. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people don't really. I mean, if you stream a lot, like they don't really play off stream. So I don't know. It's it's odd to me. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I don't really stream too often. So all I do is play off stream. I'm I'm also the same way. I don't really play well when people are watching me. Yeah. And it just kind of hurts my experience quite. Uh but it's I've also built myself a a brand that isn't really around me playing video games, so I don't think anyone wants to watch me play video games. Well, you could always create, you know, yeah. another account or, you know, post videos. Yeah. I just I don't know. I think I think it's something that I did want to do, but at the same time, I also just love talking to people. And this is this is the most selfish thing that I do is I get to talk to these cool people and then be like, it's just content, you know? Like that's what I do. And then I just get to ask people like, "Hey, uh, you want to come on a podcast?" But I just get to talk to awesome people like yourself and so many other amazing creators. Mm -hmm. I do I do want to pick your brain on your knowledge of TikTok and what you think about creating and do you think you're pretty knowledgeable about how to create TikToks and if you if you could let's say coach someone on how to make TikToks. Do you think you could do it on Hmm. Yeah, I think I could, but at the same time, I don't really have as many like followers as most TikTok creators, like the famous ones. And I know, yeah. you know, those guys post like every day and stuff, but I think I think I'd give them the basic understanding, I guess, for sure. Yeah. I think it's I think a lot of people need to understand how to how to format like better that's what i see a lot is right. is formatting like a beginning middle and end and how to how to do that well um but so did you think that it was a it was a right away click on how to do it for you or was it did you need some time to figure it out um <laughs> i'd say it was i mean like the first video like i said got 100k but as time went by yeah i figured out how to do it and how to be i guess maybe less cringe i don't know i feel like most of my tiktoks are pretty cringe but it's it's what you have to do to get people's attention i guess i don't know yeah that's exact i my some of my like irl friends will be like dude i watch your tiktoks and they all sound the same to me i'm like yeah but that's how that's how it has to be for me okay yeah, yeah. That's, i lo i do love your when you're doing your hook at the beginning most of the time or maybe all the time you don't look at the camera is there a reason for that shoot i don't know i feel like people I know this one guy who looks at the camera. It's just pretty awkward, and I just don't feel like doing that. You know, I don't, it's like, oh no, I'm good. <laughs> are you are you reading off something, or are you just looking down? I'm just looking at myself. Uh, because like when I look right now, I'm looking at myself, and that's what I where I look. 
oh shoot what happened to my camera <laughs> but yeah i don't i don't look at straight at the camera because that's just weird <laughs> it just makes like it feels like someone's staring at your soul you know <laughs> uh yeah i get it i i do i i was recording a I was recording a brand like a brand deal at the beginning of a podcast one uh, just a couple of days ago and I was saying it and I was I kept messing up because I was like this long script that I had to read off of I didn't want to cut it I just wanted it to sound seamless and my my roommates were I walked downstairs and they're like this podcast is sponsored by and I was like oh my god you guys heard that it's like the most <laughs> awkward thing because I did it like nine times at least and yeah. I was like, that's just the one thing about being a content creator. There's so many awkward things, like just me talking to myself in the in my room, you know, or like editing a video and I'm just staring right into the camera and it's just awkward. And I'm like, I can't even post this because it just looks so bad. So mm. I, I totally get it. And now, now since you said it, I'm probably going to look like record a TikTok looking at the camera and I'm going to hate it. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just staring, just staring into my soul. Yeah. Uh, that's great though. I I was always so curious about the reason that you did not look at the camera, because I thought maybe that you're recording it like on stream or something like, but it's just just how you do it. Yep. How do you how do you send TikToks to your phone? Um, I use Google Photos. You know what that is? I no it's like uh basically it's just like a google drive i don't know how to save it from there and yep i've heard so many different answers to that i've asked a couple people some people use dropbox some people have like apps that they can access their files from their computer and their phone i just use google drive that's what i tell people to do but there's just i guess there's just a whole bunch of options Google Photos. Huh? Yup. Uh, I'm trying to think. What what is, what are some goals that you have for this year? What's the main focus? And elaborate on that. Well, I actually have it written on a board. So, you know, if if anyone's listening right now, like you have to obviously put some goals on the board, you know, every day, like waking up and seeing goals, you know, especially on a wall, it mm-hmm. kind of inspires you. But one of my goals is um, 70K on Twitch, uh, 400 subs on Twitch, 100K on YouTube, 300K on TikTok. You want that 100k plaque, huh? Oh, yes. That's always been a dream of mine, to get the 100k plaque. Yes, sir. Are you are you posting YouTube shorts at all? Mm, I used to, but I don't really do it much because short subscribers and um, like regular YouTube video subs are, I think, different. Mm-hmm. So if I were to, I think I'd create a separate channel for that. Mm-hmm. I also, I think this is a good thing if anyone's listening and has goals that they want to do. Uh, the whiteboard or just a board on the wall or whatever, it's it's amazing to to remind yourself on why you're creating every day and what goal you're working towards. I do, um, I do a notebook. So I went out for the new year. I bought this notebook and I put down all my goals and i do a lot of um you know dream guests on the podcast and uh number goals and stuff like that but also i think it's just about knowing the reason that i'm creating every day and when i get down on my or if i have any you know creative block or anything like that um what how has uh your mental um whether it's you know just regular mental health or anything with creating content and 
I mean, I know we like to joke about like Valorant, you know, you know, like bringing down your mental health or whatever, but you are playing a, a strenuous game and uh, on your mind um, when it comes to really wanting to, you know, reach your peak or whatever it is, but also creating content is draining and then streaming on top of that is also very draining so how has your mental been w when it comes to content creation but also what are things that you try to do to keep it up and make sure that you're all good right so at the beginning it was very mentally straining but as you keep going you learn how to have more fun and when you take streaming not so serious it it's like pretty relieving on your mind um the content creation same thing you have to edit things that you find genuinely funny or you know genuinely interesting and that'll help with your mental as well i mean at least for me um and you just have to learn how to you know take breaks because when i first started tiktok i did you know i tiktok every day and then youtube on top of that trying to get my rank up um and you know that that took a toll on me mentally but as you go on yeah you'll learn how to deal with it mm -hmm. i think uh, uh, i was just gonna say i think people just don't they don't realize because a lot of content creators don't talk about it if it's not in their you know content or whatever and it's it's not like we need like a lot of people don't need help when it comes to um like their their mental like they don't need to put it out there for validation or anything like that but it is important to know that like you know a lot of these content creators who are people too and like things happen um but i just i like to know that people are putting that as a priority yeah um therapy dude is good i mean i don't have a therapist but just having friends to talk to mm -hmm. about your problems is also very helpful yeah and if you don't hit a goal like you can't you can't um, you can't like think negatively about it just be like okay what could i do differently and mm -hmm. you know i have to improve what i do you yeah. can't bring yourself down basically yeah, I think a lot of people put these goals out there and they kind of put a lot of pressure on themselves to hit a certain goal um, or a certain amount of viewers or, you know, whatever it may be. But I think also, like, it's not, it's not a marathon or no, it's not, it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's, that's the exactly exactly i actually follow that um quote yeah as and, well. and it's it's just I, I tell people all the time and this is one of the i think the best advice that I've, i give my friends who who are just starting content creation or whatever i just say if you show up every single day or like not necessarily post every day but if you show up with ideas if you show up you know, thinking, or even if you need a break, that's fine. But I'm just saying, if you're consistent, then and you learn and you adapt, like the best thing you can do is learn. Um, but it'll come to you. Like I, I have not, you know, I had 3000 followers for like a year. And my goal was to gain one follower a day. That's what I wanted. And then I mean, obviously I'm not like big at all, but you know, now I have 20,000 and I just really tried to just be there every day and you know, things work out. I figured it out. It wasn't the same content that I was making, but it, it came to me. Mm. So I, I just, I don't know. I, I love to hear about that people are are taking that seriously and i i love that you can take breaks because a lot of people think they can't i'm kind of one of those people who like i don't want to because i'm scared of what it will do but you know i do anyway sometimes when i really need it 
and i think it's super important 100 percent. like in the beginning like i i wasn't taking breaks too because i was like dude if i take a day break from social media people mm -hmm. are gonna forget about me but that's really not the issue yeah it's just as long as the video is good it's gonna pop up on the for you page so mm -hmm. breaks are good for you do you think tiktok shadow banning is real no <laughs> it's just uh your video is just dog your thank you <laughs> oh my god holy like just get a better video people always be saying that like i'm shadow banned i'm like there's just no way yeah i know <laughs> oh my god i love it i love it i yep. do think there is like there is a possibility that that one good video that you had like didn't get in the right eyes but i mm. don't think i think people just re-upload videos and they're like, okay, it was just the wrong time or whatever. And then they'll re-upload it. No, the video is just trash. Sometimes I upload a video and I'm like, I'll watch it and it won't get any views. I'm like, okay, yeah, this, this was a dog, dog video. Yeah. And, but then if I think the idea is good, I'll rework the video. And it's happened before where the video didn't do good. I reworked it and then it did good. So I think a lot of people should stop re-uploading things and rework the idea if you really believe in the idea a hundred percent oh man i just i love that you just said that that's gonna be my first tiktok out of this is you think tiktok shadow banning is real and you're gonna say no yeah there you go i'm so tired of hearing it too i hate people be like i upload every day and i'm like none of my videos go viral i'm like yeah because they're all trash videos they're all trash man there's something you need to fix yeah no one wants to watch you well, no one wants to wait five seconds until you hit the clip, you know? Yeah, that's 100%. And I tell I tell my friends that too, because they, they were uploading just clips. And I'm like, you guys got to gotta do something with it, you know? Mm. You got to show your face or say something. Like, even just saying something is hard sometimes. Like, it is. It, I don't know. But I... I'm just so happy that you said that. I really am. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing it. Twitter is the worst. Twitter is full of dumb opinions. That's yeah. Why, that's why I don't use it. <laughs> I was surprised that you, you answered my DM too. Because I was like, I don't know if he uses this at all. Yeah. I I mean, like, I'm on it. It's just like, I don't really... I just like people's stuff. Yeah. Who are who are some creators that you... That you watch... Uh, like like on TikTok and stuff. Hmm. I will give a vouch to you know Fatal Glitch. <laughs> very good TikToker. Love I, that love, I love Fatal. Um, L two Isaac is also a good one. Um, John, he's a good one. There's a lot. There's a lot, but those are probably top three for sure. Yeah, I love Fatal. I love him. he. He's also I love his hot takes. He has good hot takes on Twitter. I just see like a, a fatal glitch tweet where he's just shitting on some kids. Like, yep. and that's what I, I love about fatal. He ain't messing yep. around with no kids. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your peak? Uh, Val? Uh, 550 RR. I think it was top 98. Yeah. I was, I was like a jet man, dude. Jet one trick. Hmm. Yeah. What you playing these days? Are you still playing Jet? Jet Sky. I'm I'm mostly filling around the map. Like whatever map it is. Like if it's Fracture, I'll play Sky, Reyna, like I'm good with every agent, so I love Sky. I I thought I've always thought she was really good. What yeah. what, what are some changes? Have you played because I know that they did did they roll out the Aries? Nerf. Yeah, they buff. They buff the Aries. Buff. Yeah, it's super overpowered now. Everyone's using it. Like they're buying it second round and everything, bro. That shit's crazy. Okay, I thought I saw that they did an. I don't even know where it's at. I thought there was something that rolled out today. I don't think so. Oh wow! Not that I heard. Maybe but... I'm. Maybe I'm just tripping. I was. I don't. I don't play very much anymore. I don't. I'm not. I don't really like the game to be honest with you. 
but right. I keep I keep up with it because that's what I that's what I have to do right now. Um, but I I was I was plat three last act. I'm not terrible, but I'm not very good. It's not bad at all. No, I, but I I do I did want to hit diamond. I still kind of have that urge to do it. Um, <laughs> but I'm I'm an Apex Legends player. That's what I play. What rank are you in that? I'm plat as well in there. Oh, okay. So not I'm not bad. I'm not the hardest gamer. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm trying. That's my goal this year is just to be cracked at one video game. And do you see do you see longevity in Valorant? Well, I mean looking at CSGO, you see how long that lasted. I yes. mean hopefully Valorant, you know, with all these abilities and stuff, hopefully. Uh, I see longevity, but hmm. To be honest, I can't really tell a future in it, but it will die out soon. Not every game lasts forever. Just yeah. like Fortnite, Fortnite is dying eventually. I mean, you know, Fortnite how it was in the beginning, right? World Cup, everyone was playing it. Then people switched, but who knows with Valorant? It could die tomorrow. Probably not, but yeah. I, my only thing with Valorant is how when it comes to characters like CS is baffling to me that it lasted that long because it's literally the same game and like the only thing you can really do is like add new maps and like take some away from the competitive pool and stuff like that but when it comes to Valorant I just don't know like how people are gonna like playing the same agents for years to come and i don't know what they're gonna do like are they gonna take agents away and add new ones or like but then that would it, it would just be like which agents are you gonna take away and like oh no jet went away like this game sucks now yeah but like yeah. what happens when there's 30 agents and there's just like so many team comps is it gonna be the same fun game i just i don't know That'll be interesting for sure. I mean, like, I see maybe they keep, you know, a maximum amount of characters, but hopefully they don't add too much because, yeah, you know, there's going to be too many different team comps probably to keep up with, but yeah. we'll definitely see. But at the same time, like, are we ever going to see, like, a complete meta change in, like, because you can kind of almost... Like they have, we've seen a little like touches of reworks on characters, you know, when it came to like Jets ult and Jet Smoke, like stuff like that. But I wonder if there's ever going to be a complete meta change where Jet is trash and Phoenix is a god tier duelist. And it, it, I just think that's going to be an interesting plot line to follow when it comes to how Valorant's going to play out. For sure. I mean, I don't know. Again, I hope they don't add too many. And, like, mm -hmm. I just hope they know what they're doing. I, they, they know what they're doing right now. I mean, they added Neon, but she's a pretty good agent, I'd say. Is, is that your your thoughts on her? She's pretty good, or do you, do you have any extensive? She's so freaking annoying to play against. Like, bro, I'm getting stunned left and right, and I'm just getting dashed or slid on, bro. Like, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy, but that's my thoughts on her, bro. Well, I, I am talking to the Neon voice actor next week, so that'll be pretty exciting. I'm excited to talk to her, but uh, I do... What's up? That's exciting. Yeah. She, she's... I When I followed her right when it got announced, she was at like 3,000 followers or something. Like, and she just blew up. Like So oh, wow. a lot of people have been requesting it too so i'm excited for that but i i do like like uh the character as a character i don't like playing against her i've only played against her a couple times but it's really playing against a good neon is terrible like that's and i'm sure it's worse for you because you actually play against like really good people yeah it's um, hit or miss man because yeah. some neons are dog and some are just insane like holy 
Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. When I saw that clip of the the guy on Breeze when he hit, he like he hopped and then backslid. I don't know if you saw uh, that clip. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is gonna be terrible. Like when people get good with her, it's gonna be awful. Yeah. But I don't know. It's uh, it's it'll be interesting to see. Like, what what kind of the next update is gonna be like? Cause. I mean, I really hope they get the Ares, the Ares shit figured out, and I don't know. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know. I think the Ares thing is cool. It's just like the Stinger meta, if you remember from yeah. the beta. Yeah. Stinger meta versus Ares meta. I think Ares meta on top any day. What? I'm going to give you th three three guns and i want you to tell me what the best skin in your opinion is for those three guns so i want i want the best uh, i'll do four go phantom vandal op and um sh sheriff oh <clears throat> so i'd say like you want skins okay yeah so um for the sheriff i'd say reaver with the radiant buddy uh with the vandal i'd say oof this is a hard one probably reaver as well reaver vandal and then for the phantom um, i'd say ion with the radiant buddy and then the op reaver yeah yeah yeah, Reaver is insane, bro. I'm not even telling. Everyone would be like, yeah, dude, this guy is so right. Reaver, Reaver, Reaver. <laughs> I hate the Reaver Sheriff. I yeah, hate I it. Yeah, oh, I God. can't stand it. I I got on the other day. I had Ion Sheriff in my shop. I was like, I wasn't planning on buying something today, but I have to. So, my roommate just came in. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think the, the Ion Sheriff is the best Sheriff. I think Reaver, I agree with the Reaver, um, Vandal. I'm going Oni on the Phantom. And then Ion, um, Op, for sure. Okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. The Ion Collection is so strong. Besides the knife, in my opinion, I think the knife is trash. I hate like knives that look like that. Yeah, the Eagle Ion is great. Ion Op is great. You know what's better though? <laughs> Reaver. Yeah, you like okay. the Reaver knife? Yeah, yeah. I used to use that in beta. But the best knife I'd say right now is Sovereign Sword, bro. Sovereign Sword is pretty fire. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You're not wrong. Yes, sir. I think, but the Sovereign Sword with Oni Phantom, that's kind of okay, like, yeah. that's kind of my vibe, though. That is the vibe. That's also the Sinatra vibe, too. Yeah, that's why it's the vibe. Yes, sir. I, I, I'll do it, play Sova, and just, <laughs> just feel, feel real good about myself. Yep. I appreciate your skin opinions. Um, I am. I think. I think. Uh, Sovereign Ghost is the best ghost as well. And I don't 100%. think. Yeah, there's no. There's no other. The Ruination one's pretty. Is all right. That one's clean too. Top. It's kind of top tier of, of ghost. Um. Top three for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a Phantom or Vandal guy? Um, it really depends on what day it is. Like, if if I'm feeling my Vandal one day, I'll be like, alright, whatever. I'm just gonna do Vandal. Yeah. But Phantom is statistically better, but yeah. I feel like everyone says that, though. Yeah. Everyone's like, I should be using the Phantom because it is better. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Sometimes I don't want to, I just want to, I want to clean tap with the Vandal. Exactly. And so exactly. it's like, if you're feeling your shot, you know, Vandal's the way to go, in my opinion. Yeah. 
hundred percent. All right, I think uh, we're gonna probably wrap up here as as we go out with some some hot takes on saying that the Reaver Sheriff is the best. Uh, <laughs> we'll just let that one sit with the world. But I appreciate you coming on and talking to me. I had a good time. Um, yeah, I I will leave every link, uh, your link tree. If anyone wants to get coached by you, uh, they can do that in the description. And uh, no, I appreciate that, man. I, no, I appreciate you. Um, so yeah, uh, this has been Owen or Texture and Merked, and I'm out. Peace. Peace, guys.